Hello and good morning, folks. Welcome back to Almas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial update with me, Shikhar Gar. Now, we are quite close to ending the calendar year, and so as the discussions on the upcoming budget begin, considering the industries for discussion, interestingly, the government has cut the export duty they imposed in the month of May on the steel industry to nil as on 19th of November 2022. Oil, another commodity, rather quite an important commodity, has had its volatile ride on yesterday with correcting quite a while on the downside only to rise up again on the denial of possible increase in supply by the OPEC. On the cryptos we hear, the brokerage Genesis raising alarms of a possible bankruptcy amid the contagion, adding fuel to the already aflame crypto markets. Now, GK, this is kind of a mixed market and we are already seeing a lot of subdued activity for this week. So what's your take? What should be our, uh, what should be our approach? <clears throat> yeah, good morning. Uh, uh, Shikhar, what caught my eye was uh, the German PPI inflation, which uh, tumbled big time. Uh, in another sign that global inflation may be easing, uh, the PPI posted the first monthly fall in two and a half years, falling 4.2%. Uh, you know, uh, mainly due to uh, prices of electricity and natural gas uh, falling. Uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, it rose only 34.5% uh, compared to 45.8%. Uh, it must be a heartening news for ECB, who is having to raise rates substantially to contain inflation. Uh, expectation is that the pipeline inflation will eventually reflect in lower consumer prices, which recorded as high as 11.6% last month. And that could be possibly uh, peaking. Uh, in the absence of uh, much uh, 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 much uh, economic data in the US, uh, we had a very subdued uh, session. Uh, bond yields were uh, uh, in a very much narrow, uh, ranged in a narrow uh, band and uh, stocks further drifted lower, particularly taking cues uh, from the Chinese concerns on uh, uh, COVID. Uh, we, did, we did have one data on uh, Chicago Fed National Activity Index, uh, which confirmed the slowing trend in activity uh, falling from 0 0.17 to minus 0 0.5. Uh, we got mixed messages from Fed speakers. Uh, in fact, uh, Mary Daly said, uh, although one month data does not uh, make a victory, the latest inflation report had some encouraging numbers, including a long-awaited decline in goods price inflation. Uh, uh, you know, on the other side, Mister said the Fed could come down to uh, may could come down from seventy-five basis points hike next month, but uh, she did not think that they were anywhere near stopping rate hikes. We will have uh, the known hawk James Bullard again today, and wondering if he has more inputs to moderate or intensify his hawkish speak. Uh, Hawk from the European side, Mister Holzman favored a seventy-five BP hike in ECB in December. If the inflation picture does not improve, however, the consensus in Europe uh, favors a 50 BP rise uh, in the next meeting. Uh, of course, we did start uh, the day with uh, uh, rising concerns on COVID cases in China reverberating across markets, uh, seeing indices drop uh, in mo most, of, most of the markets. Uh, it, is, it was no more intensely reflected in oil, which saw Brent draw nearly 9% uh, fall from the highs of the day but recovered later uh, from technical support. Also influencing the fall was the WSJ report suggesting that Saudi Arabia was contemplating 5 lakh barrels per day increase in production, though they denied it vehemently later. Oil price cap by G7, which is likely to be implemented soon, uh, was having its effect uh, too. Uh, on the currency side, euro dropped near 1.0 to support, thus seeing a 2% correction from its peak. And that is healthy for a more sustainable recovery in the single currency, which has been beaten down since uh, early 2021. Uh, we are looking for more recovery in euro area, euro, as the euro area is uh, having a stream of uh, improved data pointing to a much better outlook. Sterling's resilience is surprising given the prospect of a stagflation for the economy, but it gives me feeling that the structural shorts in the currencies are being unbound, uh, unbound uh, rather. Uh, on the you know uh, central bank action side, we have Fed minutes uh, tomorrow, but it will be preceded by another jumbo rate hike by uh, Bank of uh, New Zealand uh, by 75 basis points, uh, raising rates from 3.5 to 4.25 percent. Uh, 
uh, on the rupee side, uh, obviously 81 and 90 uh, meant that we have weakened again 2% from the lows hit uh, uh, after the CPI data. And, uh, uh, you know, quite expectedly, selling pressure was a bit more at those levels, exporters latching on to the rally, and some inflows were also heard, uh, initial moves being triggered by offers from uh, nationalized banks. Uh, of course, neither the corrective rising dollar index nor the weakness in the one triggered uh, by uh, fresh COVID concerns affected the rupee. Uh, as my view is that DXY correction may not go too far from 108, currently at 107.65. Uh, the pair, I mean the rupee uh, against the dollar, will see slow retracement to the lower side as well. Uh, to end, I'm just uh, pointing to two uh, premier rating agency statements notable for their dovish outlook. Moody's has said that uh, with easing inflation dynamics, US first 25 to 50 BP rate cut rate cut timing mean, could come as early as November 2023 and a move to neutral policy stance in 2025. Fitch, on the other hand, said that uh, labor demand will fall significantly next year as uh, Fed tightening weighs on the economic activity and reflects in job losses and falling job openings. Unemployment rate could rise to 4.7% next year and a peak at 5.4% uh, in 2024. Currently, it is at 3.7%. The lagged impact of uh, aggressive Fed tightening, the drag on real wages from high inflation, and knock-on impact from downturn in Europe will drive the U.S. economy into a recession, a recession territory early next year. Uh, so uh, just to note some concerns expressed by the rating agencies as well, apart from you know what we have been hearing from various analysts. Uh, looking forward to uh, definitely a slow market, uh, in this week uh, and prepare for a jumbo, uh, you know, data week uh, next week, uh, starting with um, US GDP, uh, PC inflation and <clears throat> unemployment data uh, for the month of uh, November. Thank you. Okay, quite good, GK. And uh, yes, folks, uh, there has been some recent concerns on the uh, uh, markets from the Chinese front on the COVID cases. But uh, all said and done, yes, we have seen some bit of good action on the majors uh, valuation side with respect to the currency of dollar. So we are expecting some, uh, we, we are understanding that there is some structural short being unwound, uh, but at the same time, the kind of retracement for USD INR on the downside can be slow and, uh, you know, a bit gradual as uh, JK mentioned. On the other hand, there were good updates on the uh, economic performance by the rating agencies, as JK mentioned, by Moody's and by Fitch. And uh, they, they're talking about some lag effect of the economy. Now, this is something uh, which is quite an intensive topic. And we also aim to discuss something like this uh, as we come up with our own Almus Rupee Money Conference on 10th December. Folks, uh, we are calling a lot many stalwarts. Uh, it's a good space where we'll be discussing a lot many things on the economic performance, on the currency markets and uh, the financial markets as well. So stay, stay tuned for a lot many updates to come by your way. And we hope you attend the conference to gain the also valuable uh, insights that are up for offer. Thank you so much for joining and we shall come back again tomorrow morning with another round of updates.